Hawk is the largest nation in Alwid and the birthplace of the Crusader movement. When Soon Ali Kinder Rin Venk came to power in 1761, he found himself with the opportunity to realize his lifelong dream, the end of the rule of the first families, and by extension, the end of the long war that had afflicted Alwid for seven centuries. Talk had been a fading kingdom when Ali Kinder took hold of the reins of destiny, and so despite being a single nation against all of Alwid, its future enemies failed to recognize the danger they faced. And so army after army, attempting to fight in the old-fashioned, sedate style, was overwhelmed by crusaders debouching from rigid airships behind their lines, and monarch after monarch was swept away by the tide of revolution, ably encouraged by clandestine assistance from Tok's special branch. By 1776, the crusader threat was too great for the first families to ignore. A grand convocation of first family nobles from across the continent met in the kingdom of Creven and agreed to form the Grand Army of Kings, a unified field force of the myriad royalist armies. Fortunately for the Crusader cause, the Grand Army was unified in name only, and political infighting, old rivalries, lack of standardization, and inexperienced or incapable officers all combined to hamstring it. It took two years for the Grand Army to take to the field against the Crusade, during which disaster upon disaster accumulated for the royalist cause. Dern Mazemir Clintock, the King of Creven, was abducted by elite special action riflers of the Crusade in 1767, causing political instability in that nation. And in 1768, pro-Crusader sabotage in the teetering on the brink of revolution Kingdom of Mare Break resulted in the destruction of the Grand Army's main logistics hubs in the port cities of Laugardi and Hovudra. The Grand Army, already on the verge of collapse, gave battle at Slavesvi and Granfin, both in the Kingdom of Creven. Both battles were defeats, though not large ones, but the will of the Grand Army was shattered, and it disintegrated, leaving behind thousands of tons of war material and tens of thousands of prisoners. The crusade continued, but for the next three years, the time of decisive battles appeared to have ended. Partisans, be they fighting for the royalist cause, or merely for their homes in the face of foreign occupiers, continued to resist, exacting a steady toll of crusader riflers. The stubborn royalists of Fidwog still held out, despite having the effrontery to share a border with Tok itself. And in the east, ringed by its enemies, the ancient and proud kingdom of Koftir hurled defiance and refused to surrender. Koftir's defense rested upon the Great Wall, a massive fortification encircling that kingdom's nine founding city-states. In an age of air-mobile descents from airships, artillery firing indirectly, and the great armored fighting tractors, the wall seemed surmountable at last. But the crusade was stretched thin, after a decade of war, and Ali Kinder could not devote the strength that would be needed to force it and overthrow all Kof Tyr once through. Instead, he resolved, through calculation or out of desperation, to breach it and show that not even the vaunted defenses of Kof Tyr could withstand the righteous fury of the Crusade. By the end of 1771, the plans for the assault were finalized in the hopes that breaching the wall would be the decisive victory that would finally end the long war, Ali Kinder leaned heavily on the fanatical crusaders from Tulmor, whose homeland had long been a victim of Koftiran imperialism, and stressed to his Kernerals that previously unthinkable tactics were acceptable for this, the decisive offensive to end the long war, the aim towards which the crusaders had striven for a long and blood-soaked decade. Despite fierce resistance from Koftir's armed forces, known as the Crymuster, during which the core of their mechanical corps and the elite air corps poured out their lives like water to stave off defeat, the crusade broke through, blowing a 200-mile gap 
in the Great Wall. This was a success beyond Ali Kinder's hopes. The heart of Koftir was laid bare, and a demoralized and depleted enemy stood between the crusade and the culmination of his hopes. But even as the crimemuster prepared to die where they stood, to buy time for the royal family to be evacuated to Fidwog, the crusader offensive lost momentum as revolts in the occupied lands closer to talk suddenly choked off the flow of supplies to the front and overwhelmed even the famously efficient Talkish logistic corps. With time, the offensive might have been resumed, and Koftir might have known the steady tread of triumphant conqueror's boots for the first time in its thousand-year history, but for Sithwin. Sithwin is the annual month of storms, which closes out the year in Alduin, a time of harsh and brutal weather, and the Sithwin of 1772 to 1773 was beyond devastating. Supplies of petrol became scarce for Crusader forces in Koftir, and they were forced to retreat back to the Great Wall, turning many of the surviving fortifications they held inwards to anchor their own lines. By 1774, they had retreated from Koftir entirely, leaving devastation in their wake. But though battered, Koftir was unbroken. In 1775, Tok's Airmobile Corps was withdrawn from field operations to deal with revolts close to home. And the long war continued. As time went on, Ali Kinder became more reclusive, perhaps because affairs of state demanded so much of his time, and perhaps also because of ill health. In 1779, the Crusade suffered a true defeat, rather than a mere failure to achieve victory, when its forces in uprising racked Creven abandoned that country and retreated to the Crusade's western stronghold of Mare Break. Shortly after this, early in Alwith, the first month of 1780, Ali Kinder died. The circumstances of his death are unclear. After nearly a month of failing to give his weekly radio address to talk, and his rumors spread like wildfire, his death was finally announced by the government. The upper echelons of the crusade in talk split into opposing factions, some arguing that only Ali Kinder's son, Mertain, could succeed him, and others vehemently suggesting that to even consider hereditary rule was antithetical to all they had fought for since 1761. In the West, the crusader state of Mare Break took the lead in breaking away from the metropole, at making a bid for leadership even as talk itself began the slide into civil war. Ali Kinder's dream of an Alwid without war has left talk in anarchy, the great crusader armies hollowed out by two decades of war, and millions upon millions of war dead. And the long war continues.